On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Matt Christensen returns to show us some of his favorite features in Visual Studio 2019. Should we make this a longer or shorter episode? Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Mads Christensen. Mads, welcome back. Thank you very much. It's been a long time, yes. way too long since I you've know. been on the show. I agree. It's and, good to be back. And we are here to talk about Visual Studio 2019, mm -hmm. which has just recently shipped. Um, had a great launch, a lot of great content from the launch event. We'll have pointers to that. But what I thought we would do is a couple things. One is just have you come on and show us some of your favorite features to kind of keep the excitement going. And then two, we're going to try and experiment. We talk a lot about how long these shows should be and when do people stop watching. And I tend to go longer than, than, uh, than people want because I tend to talk a lot. So <laughs> we're going to try and experiment today. I'm going to do less talking and we're going to focus more on demos. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see what happens if we keep this a shorter episode. And then you guys are going to tell us whether or not you like it. So I basically have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. To show as many of my favorite features yes. as I can. Starting right now. All right. So uh, in Visual Studio 2019, I want to start with the new search experience. So we completely redid how we do Visual Studio search. And um, I love it. So. As I search, as I type, you see here how I get search results. And I get that globally from around Visual Studio, all the commands, menus, components, templates, all sorts of things, including options. So let me just start by going in here and uh, make a font a little larger in the editor when we get to that. Mm -hmm. um, I can also say new console app. And that gives me the console app template. I'm just going to say OK to create that. And that was it. I now have a new console app. Wow. That was fast, right? So that's even faster than calling up the new dialog and searching in that. It is. Sweet. Yes, that's why it's one of my favorite features. It makes me more productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> let's start coding here. So this is just the default uh, static void main uh, method I have here. Let's uh, see if we can do something a little different. Uh, so let's create a string array. And I'm going to create a new array of strings, OK? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put two strings in there. And I basically want hello world to be in an array. So I'm going to copy hello, control C to copy. And I'm going to go straight on and control C again on world. So now I've copied both, OK? So now I want to hit control shift V to insert. All right, it not control V to paste, but control shift V. And that gives me the clipboard ring, which wow. is now visualized. So I can choose which of the things I've copied and insert them super easily like this. Nice. Yeah. So if you do a control V, will it insert in order? Yes. So the control V is just the normal paste. Right. But control shift V, which has been there for a long time. Control uh, V has been there for a long control time. Control shift V has been there for a long time too. Oh, okay. But as a new thing, it visualizes, you can see what's in the clipboard ring is what it's called. So control C, control C has always stored multiple things to the clipboard? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. So moving on, let's say that I want to take, um, you know, I want to print out I want to concatenate these two, hello and world. I want to mm -hmm. concatenate them into one string, and that I want to write out to the console. Uh, but only, and this is a contrived example, but, but I want to make an if statement here to say, if my list dot length is larger than zero, right, then I want to uh, print out. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to hit dot and look at all these new um, things I've got here. Uh, refactoring. So we've got a bunch of new refactorings that makes it uh, super easy to do all sorts of more advanced things. And uh, I'm actually just going to add braces to this one like this. <laughs> so that's been there for a while. Uh, but it's really helpful to have all these new refactorings that make me uh, make it easier to like convert code from one uh, from one thing to the other. Uh, going back from link queries to for each loops and vice versa. Cool. Uh, really, really helpful. So now I can simply just go down here and do a string join. I'm going to join on, a, on an empty string. 
and I'm going to provide a list. Now see what happened here. I'm going to just force this again. Oh. So I'm going to uh, see here. Zoom in. Notice how the first two items, list and arcs, are has a star because IntelliCode is, which is a new feature in Visual Studio, uh, it's an optional extension at the moment, so you okay. have to install that. Uh, but it knows the context I'm in. It knows that this particular method, the string join method, takes an array of strings. And then it knows that, oh, I actually have two that are in scope. I have arcs up here, and I have list right here. Mm -hmm. So it suggests to me those at the top of the completion list. So that's just super helpful. And I can easily uh, insert it like that. Cool. So IntelliCode is uh, really a fantastic aid, especially when you're dealing with um, uh, new APIs that you're not so familiar with. It helps you to figure out what um, what is the most common use patterns of right. different and APIs. Telecode is basically in, in IntelliSense with a bunch of AI behind it, yep. getting very smart about so it. So scanning, we've been scanning like thousands of uh, GitHub repos mm -hmm. uh, for the different languages, for C Sharp for instance, um, to figure out how people use various different APIs. And based on that, we put it into a machine learning model and you know, out comes a very, very clever IntelliSense engine cool. that, well, that sits on top of the current IntelliSense. Mm -hmm. So that's very nice. And I forgot a parenthesis here. All right. So let's um, set a breakpoint and hit F5. So now it runs and it breaks. Yep. And I can see down here in my uh, locals window that I have my list uh, member here. And I can now search. So I can now search for world. And notice how it can find mm -hmm. values that are in lists or dictionaries or whatever, no matter how deep they are in the nice. hierarchy of things. So that's really welcomed. And that search works in autos, locals, and the watch windows. So it makes it very easy to find these, hard to find sometimes, uh, values of properties and so on. Cool. So I'm just going to continue here, F5. And we can see the hello world is printed out. But notice, it didn't close down when it was done. It keeps going. And there it goes. And that's very nice. So uh, that was sort of the, some of the new things. So what you probably couldn't tell was that the step debugging was a lot faster. So as I was uh, setting the breakpoint and it was hitting, that's over 50% faster now than yeah. it used to be. Okay. Um, and that's a very, very nice thing. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell on a simple console app like this. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So let's make uh, a mistake here. So I'm removing a, a parenthesis here, so now I have a syntax error. Mm -hmm. So at the bottom of the window, I now have uh, what's called a document health indicator. So it tells me, without having the error list open, I can now see that, oh, I actually have one error. I don't have any warnings. But that makes it super easy for me to see that, oh, I'm not, it's not green. This file actually has some issues. Right. And typically, that's because you, are, you, know, you scroll your uh, syntax errors out of view. And so you don't necessarily know when you try to build, for instance. So glancing at this makes it super convenient to see. And so I can navigate between these errors. Alt, page up, and page down. Mm. And so that <coughs> takes me exactly to where they are. And I can fix them super easily. And now. No issues found, we're good to go. Cool. So that's in addition to the uh, showing it on the scroll bar as well, right? Yes, so it's just having more. Well, yeah, and it gives you the navigation. So you can go very right, easily okay. go between the yeah. errors and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to show another thing here. So let's just save this. Uh, let's add this to source control. Let's do that. Oh. So I'm going to right-click the solution, and I'm going to add solution to source control. And it's going to add it to git. And here we go. And now it's all, you know, first commit. Mm -hmm. Now let's make a change. And this change I want to do is I want to clean up this file a little bit. So I want to remove all the comments. And you can see there are other things here, like um, I have unused using, using statements yeah. and so on. Yeah. Um, I might even have like let's let's just produce some let's produce some uh, formatting issues here. Like I have some wrong indentation here. 
So, so I have an extension called Comment Remover mm -hmm. that lets me very easily just remove comments with a keyboard shortcut, like that. And now, I want to do the code cleanup. And so as a new feature down here at the bottom, let's zoom in here a little bit, we can see that we have a couple of profiles for code cleanup that we can run. One of them has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. And we can configure those two profiles in here. So I configured them to have a bunch of code fixers. Now these code fixers, I can remove them out or back into what the profile will run. And these include like sort usings or remove unnecessary usings, a bunch of things. So now if I hit control K E, that was the keyboard shortcut. We can see here how my code is just tightened up. And if I were to do a code review, I'm in a much better place right now because now I don't have to, we don't have to talk about formatting uh -huh. and coding style conventions and so on. And how do you create those? You go down here to the bottom and open the menu and click configure code cleanup. And so how do you find additional fixers to add? So right now, the only fixers are the ones that are built in. There are 14 built in. Okay. So that's the, so in the future, we'll see uh, this change. Okay. Uh, but as of right now, we have Got these it. 14 built in. Okay. And they're super helpful. So, um, so now I have a change. I'm going to save the file. I'm going to commit it. But I'm not going to fully commit this. I'm going to call this cleanup. Instead, I'm going to stash it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to stash. So what happens is I don't create another branch. I basically create a stash where I take the changes that I have and put them away locally. And if you see what happened is that my changes in the source here was reverted mm -hmm. because I, take, I took the changes and stashed them. So if you think of, if you're used to TFS, for instance, you have a shelf set. Right. The difference is the shelf set is actually, um, actually exists in the remote server, whereas uh, git stash only exists locally, so only on my machine here. Ah, okay. okay. But I have it right down here. I can apply it anytime I want. And typ typical use cases for this is, you know, I make a change, but then I have to fix a bug really quick and I have to change branches. So I can stash my stuff, mm -hmm. change my branch, and then come back afterwards to that branch and apply it again. Yeah. Or I can work in one branch, figure out, oh man, I should have done it in another branch, stash my change, change to that other branch, and apply it to that branch. Oh, very so nice. it's Yes. So that's super helpful that I can do it all right, right here. All right. And let me show you another really cool thing. This is the last thing I want to show. Okay. So let's close the solution. And I'm going to open a bigger solution that's got a bunch of projects. The Pro Power Tools, oh. my all-time favorite Pro Power Tools. Actually, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to open it in a different way. You know, the very first Visual Studio Toolbox episodes are about the productivity power tools. What? Split into two episodes because, you Just know, we had to keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I want to open a solution that's on my disk here. And um, there's now a new option down here to say, don't load the projects. Uh -huh. so that's kind of bizarre until you see what's going on. This is a solution that has many projects. There are solutions out there that are way bigger, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But you saw how fast oh. this was loaded. Yes. So a typical scenario is that <clears throat> if you have a solution with a lot of projects in mm -hmm. it, you might only work on a subset of those projects. So it could right. be that like you have a back end and then you have like a you know, Windows desktop front end and ASP.NET front end. Mm -hmm. But you only work on either the ASP.NET front end or, you know, any of these other things. And so why even load the rest? So now nothing is loaded. Yep. And I can go in and say, I want to load this particular project. So just like normal, I can say reload project. But now I can also go in here and say load project dependencies. Right. Mm -hmm. So it knows, okay, I have this particular project has other de dependencies on other projects in the solution uh, that it needs in order to build. Mm -hmm. So now I can do that. And that was, in this case, it was just this other project up here. Cool. And so now these are the only two projects loaded. And is there and a I way? And I can hide everything else oh. or show it again up here. Is there a way to basically set the equivalent of a profile where 
some days I want to load these three projects, other times I want to load a different three projects. Yes, I'm glad you asked. So now that I have sort of my definition here, these are the two projects I want in the solution that I care about. I can right click and say save as solution ah. filter. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this was not scripted, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Nope. I actually was just thinking that would be a cool thing to have. It was, and it's already in there. It was a perfect segue. Cool. So this is uh, this saves a file. So I'm going to call this one since it has. So if you know the, the project names are column guide. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to call it column guide. And if we look here, it's going to save as an S L N F file. Mm -hmm. So solution filter is the F. Cool. So save that. And now let's just close this solution. Now I have the SLNF. I open it and boom. Fantastic. It only loads those. Mm -hmm. So that SLNF file roams with my in my repo. So mm -hmm. other uh, members of my team can also use this. You can create as many as you want. So it can be one for the ASP.NET team, one for the desktop team, one for the backend team, Excellent. and so on, right? So Excellent. Can, yeah. So that's, uh, that's very helpful. Um, and so one question that we get with this is, well, what if you make changes to the solution file? Like let's say you add new solution items, um, like in here, for instance. What if I add a new file here? Like, well, how does that then roam between those different filters? Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is that the filters are actually just a small little JSON file describing just the product that has to load but it still uses the original SLN file to figure out what is there. So when you make changes to the actual solution, everyone gets the benefit regardless of what right. filter they have applied. Right, because it's just a filter of what of what's, uh, projects open. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Cool. So if you have a big solution, then this is going to speed up your uh, workday a lot. That's excellent. Yeah. Cool. So those were, those were uh, my favorite features of the new. There's a bunch more, mm -hmm. uh, but these are, these are my favorites. That was. One minute of me talking and 15 minutes of demo. We did yes. it. Hey. <laughs> I actually like this a lot. I think we should do more of these. But as always, you guys let us know if you liked the 15 minutes or if you wanted us to spend more time uh, diving down. So as always, this show's all about you. So let us know what you think. Hope you like that. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.